Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So I already recorded this video for my podcast channel ish, but it wasn't too like structured. So I'm re-recording it. Uh, I kind of want to have a chill conversation about the one Tua Tungo Vailoa and about the Miami Dolphins because I found some interesting things about him. Obviously, I don't know everything about the Miami Dolphins. Like Miami Dolphin fans, you know much more about me than Dolphins, but I'm a Giants fan. I know much more about you than the uh, than you get Dolphins fan. Anyway, so uh, I know the basics about the Dolphins. I did some research. We all know the whole Tua thing. He's like, oh, this is easy. You know, I, th- I thought it'd be easy, but it was easy because he wasn't checking into different plays. He was just doing his stuff. He, he was doing his... Uh, short routes and they had to uh, somewhat like drew lock limit what he could do but he was nursing a hip injury i don't think he got a lot of reps uh, minus the the covid thing and it was kind of confusing why brian fuller played him when he did and they took him out i don't really love that i don't uh i guess when the player's playing bad you take him out but he's your future guy you don't take him out like you're just gonna hurt his confidence and if he's not ready to play don't play him you know, obviously, not lack of a preseason hurt him. <laughs> Injuries hurt him. Not really knowing the playbook hurt him. Maybe it got to his head a little bit. But the thing is, we're going to see a bounce back year. We're, that's usually what happens. What usually happens is the quarterback plays bad and he's focused. Maybe if they're not Dwayne Haskins. But, like, you usually have a bounce back year. But two is a good kid. He has the accuracy. He has the arm enough. That's good. We thought he was going to be the next Kyler Murray running around. But he can't do that anymore. He has to adjust his play a little bit because of his hip. Even though he was never really that athletic guy, he just got it to his wide receivers. Now he's reunited with Jalen Waddle. You have Devontae Parker. You have Miles Gaskin. Um, who else do they have? But they have they have a bunch of players now that they're, you're looking at it. But the thing is, the offensive line isn't great. I'd probably rank it bottom fourth in the league, like between 24 and uh, 25 and 32. But, you know, two is going to be a good player. Uh, I think we overreacted at him in the beginning, like, oh, you know, he sucks. Uh, you know, he sucks because he had well, he had a couple bad games. But don't forget, he was he was winning those games. He, you know, if he can execute the offense, that's great. But now the future of the Miami Dolphins about to it. Now you got to you got to dedicate the next year to him. You obviously have Jacoby Brissett behind him, and then the third their third string guy is a guy named Reed Sinet. I was I'm like, you think that you would know some of these backups? No idea who that is. But yeah, if if you suck, you. you you're gonna have a bad record. No, you still. I think they're still gonna be nine and eight. Like their floor is nine and eight, and then you'll just you know you figure it out. Maybe you have you trade for Aaron Rodgers or do something like that. But you have, you can't be worried about that now. You have to you, know, you have to coach Tua up. Now the whole Chan Gailey thing is kind of perplexing. It's about like you know, the first one, Chad O'Shea left, and then then Chan Gailey left. Uh, is he saying basically Tua? I can't deal with him. Maybe his work ethic isn't great. But I think to, from what we hear, Tua is a good kid. And he just uh, he just struggled his rookie year. You know his he's I could say you could say his, his arm is a little bit limited. I probably was like oh his arm is fine. People say no his arm is good enough. Maybe it's more like a Case Keenum arm. But get him to his wide receivers. Um, you have obviously Will Fuller is one I forgot, but he got suspended. Um, but yeah, you have a smart offensive scheme. I forget who their coach is now, but I think I think Tua is going to bounce back. A little bit. Like, obviously, we say, though, this player's going to bounce back. You thought Carson Wentz would have a great season, and he didn't. He didn't. But the schedule looks – I'm not going to break it down, but it looks favorable for them. They're going to be battling, I think, the Patriots for the second spot. Um, I think the Patriots are challenging, for, challenging either for first or second, and the Dolphins are challenging for second or third, you know? So, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's uh, let's see how it, it ends up for them. But I also want to mention their, their drafts because – in 20, 2017, the Saints had a beast draft. You had, I'm forgetting the name, of it, like Trey Hendrickson and a bunch of like the the foundation, you could say, for the team. But And that's why they were so pretty good this year. Now And that got, went back years and years. So usually it's the fourth year. You look back in the fourth year and you're like, okay, that, that's why the team played so well. But if we look back on 2017, this is their draft. Charles Harris, Raekwon McMillan, Cordea Tankersley, Isaac Asiata, uh, David Ch- God Godchow uh, Godcho, but he's actually playing for the Patriots now. So it's it's kind of just it's lackluster and a bunch of and also Raekwon McMillan is apparently playing for the Patriots too. Now I'd be lying if I said I knew a lot about these guys and I said oh yeah I know exactly who that is. But I'm, I'm looking at it. I mean that wasn't great. Now let's switch over to uh, 2018. This is still before the new regime. I think uh, this is a pretty good draft. But you traded Minka Fitzpatrick away for pretty much the 2019 first pick. That we'll see later. Yeah, Mike Kosicki, good draft. I would rate those like a B, B plus. 
you know, though Jerome Baker, good outside linebacker. I don't really know a lot about him, but it seems you know, it seems he's like a, a suitable starter. Callum Balaj, I've seen him around, but how how good he's he actually? He's averaging three point two yards per attempt. You know, Cornell Armstrong, Quinn Phillips, Jason Sanders. Oh, Jason Sanders is actually their their starter here. So, um, you know, it, it, and you saw him doing like some creative extra credit plays. So that's a, that's a pretty good draft overall. It's like a B plus draft, a B. You know, you got some starters here, but Minka Fitzpatrick, that loss is kind of high. But then you go on to 2019, and uh, you didn't have a lot of draft picks. All it was is Chris, Christian Wilkins. Um, you know, he's a good player. But he, he is the kind of like that, that energy guy. And from what I've seen, he's pretty smart on the field. But you had guys like Dexter Lawrence. You had guys like Brian Burns that went there. They're probably better players. Then Michael Dieter. I, I've heard good things about his future, um, but obviously not not amazing he's not i don't think he's gonna be starting and a bunch of these guys you could see you could see the by the way the numbers like a, a pb means pro bowl ap1 means all pro obviously you got we want to wait a little bit for these guys to develop but you know pretty much no all pros down the board isaiah prince with i believe is a huge bust from what i remember miles gaskin decent player you know has that he's gonna be your second guy i believe this year uh andrew van grinkle like he's 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 uh uh, but he has a couple forced fumble in his uh, fumbles in his career. I don't know really know a whole bunch about him. It seems like he's a solid guy. So uh, yeah, and then you go to 2018. This is where like they really need to nail the draft. But you got Tua, Austin Jackson, Noah. That those are like B minus. Like when you need th- three players, I think the Raiders had a better top three than they did. Yeah, Austin Jackson. Uh, people like his athletic upside, but he kind of gets fooled around by you know smarter, you know the smarter edge guys. Guys like Bradley Chubb, I believe it was Bradley Chubb that really owned him. Got a lot of sacks against him. So, you you want a guy left tackle that's gonna be able to win those big games. But he has he has some athletic traits. But he's your guy for at least the next five years. You want, um, especially a first round tackle. Then Noah Igbenogany. He came out really young. I believe like the youngest player ever. The thing about him, his his length is a concern from what I've been reading. He he kind of needs time to come in. But he's at, he's athletic. He can catch up with a lot of guys, and um, he's just he's just a little bit short. That's what they they kind of say about him in the slot. Robert Hunt, they move him over to guard, I believe, but they they take an Eric Flowers spot. Raekwon David, these are good picks. Here's some good picks. I've heard some bad things about Raekwon Jones. Um, his ability is kind of like a strong safety that kind of just kind of like a Jonathan Abram type. That's what I hear. Salton Kinley, I've actually I've actually uh, his his hype was bigger than what he actually performed. But they, they expect high things from him eventually. And then I don't really know anything about anything else. Like Curtis Weaver is the, a guy they kind of wanted to go for. But there's a couple of D picks in there. And then Blake Ferguson as a long snapper. And then Malcolm Perry. Not really getting much out of them. And then the 2021 draft. You got two Javens. You got the JJJ. Javen, uh, Jalen, Jalen, and Javon. I, I love those three picks. Obviously Jalen is a little bit of concern. But you address that edge. Um, Hunter Long. I really, I really like their draft this year. But I don't really know a lot about the last two picks. But Hunter Long. He's a, he's a third, fourth round tight end. Liam Meikenberg. Now you have a pretty like your upside on the offensive line isn't high, but the base I feel like is pretty good. Javon Holland, smart safety, helping out around there. I believe he can also play corner as well. You know, Byron Jones didn't have the best season last year, and then you know Jalen Waddle. So they're they're pretty decent at draft. They didn't hit any home runs really, but the Saints they've hit home runs. They haven't hit really hit a home run. It's like it's your Waquan Davis of the world that you you kind of like the upside. Um, but yeah, any Alabama p- player they picked is pretty much good at this point. But yeah, that's that's my opinion about the Dolphins. They're in nine. I think they're going to win like ten games this year again, ten seven. But I really don't see the ceiling on the team or the floor. You, you just have two. I need to play pretty well. Uh, just get it to his playmakers, and hopefully their uh, offensive coordinator, who, by the way, is they have two, George Codsey and Eric Studsfeld. I can't really speak a lot about them. And I'm really I also with Blind Flores, there also is some concern, I believe, about his like, personality and getting rid of coordinators quick, like turnover. Maybe it's a little bit too hard of a nose, but he came into the league. He, he had that underdog team, and now they have expectations, and uh, let's see what they do. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me guys think, and uh, I guess I'll see you in my next one if you want to. Bye, guys.